International migration is a topic routinely plagued by misinformation. This creates a serious problem not only for governments that regulate mobility, but also for people hiring migrants, researchers understanding migration, and everyday people interacting with migrants. To introduce facts and clear data to discussions about migration, the European Commission's Knowledge Center on Migration and Demography developed a tool called the Atlas of Migration. This collection of data from numerous sources is a central, easy, accessible source of factual information. So let's spend some time looking at its composition and use. The European Commission's Atlas of Migration was originally published as a book in 2019. This project was primarily completed by the Commission's Knowledge Center on Migration and Demography and covered 28 EU member states plus 171 other countries and territories. However, it soon became clear that the Atlas needed to be even more accessible. So, in 2020, the Commission released an online interactive version of the Atlas. This level of accessibility means the Atlas is not just a tool for lawmakers. Now, any stakeholder can access the most precise facts and figures about migration available. That means any person interested in knowing about global migration has access to the same top-notch resources as government officials. So let's look at what exact information is available. The Atlas of Migration is divided into two groups, the current 27 EU member states and then 172 other countries and territories. This means nearly every recognized country in the world has a section in the Atlas. Let's look first at the information available for EU member states. These figures primarily come from Eurostat, the European statistical office responsible for collecting and standardizing data across all member states so that comparisons between countries are possible. For an EU member state, the Atlas provides data about national populations, migrant flows, issued residence permits, asylum applications and decisions, irregular migrants who were ordered to leave, the number of immigrants who became citizens through naturalization, and a variety of statistics about social inclusion, labor market participation, and education. Finally, the EU Directorate General for Migration and Home Affairs provides the number of Schengen area visas granted each year. Now the other 172 countries have a different set of indicators because they do not all standardize their respective data like the EU countries. This results in a larger amount of data sources, but also a larger amount of indicators per country. Here's the rundown. The United Nations Economic and Social Affairs Department provides migrant stock data plus general demographic information. The UN and related organizations also give statistics about asylum seekers, refugees, and internally displaced persons. Furthermore, the UN's treaty repository provides information about international agreements related to migration that each country has signed or ratified. Now on the financial and development aspects of migration data, received remittances, data on development aid, development indices, mortality rates, political stability, and poverty are provided by a combination of UN organizations and independent institutes. Finally, Eurostat does contribute some figures to this group, namely residence permits, irregular migration, and naturalization in EU destinations only. This is clearly a wide range of information, so let's take some time to look at accessing and understanding all of the data. Accessing the Atlas is straightforward. Just go to the URL seen here and listed in the description. You'll see two drop-down menus at the top one for the 27 EU member states and the other for non-EU countries. Don't forget, there are a few countries in Europe that are not EU member states. At the bottom are a selection of guides explaining the Atlas's purpose, data sources, and interpretation. To see the data, select either an individual country or region from the menu and hit the button to the right to confirm. Let's choose Germany as an example of an EU member state. Each country profile includes two pages of data visualizations, which display the indicators we discussed. Let's take a few minutes to understand the different types of charts here. Take the demography chart at the top. This is an interactive figure. 
and the drop down menu to the right may be used to change the year of data collection so that you can see changes over time. The main point of this chart is to show the total population per year, but it is disaggregated in three ways. First, each row corresponds with an age group. Next, we see that the graph is split down the center with the number of men per age group on the left and the women on the right side. You can even click on each side of the stats about what percent of each age bracket are composed of each gender. Finally, we see some shading in these bars, which represents migrant status. We see here that the vast majority of each age bracket are non-migrants. A slim portion of the bars are made up of migrants from within the EU, and another portion are from outside of the EU. Now let's look at migrant flows. These circles can be interpreted just like pie charts. Each portion of the circle represents a percentage of a total group. In this case, annual immigrant and emigrant flows measured in thousands. We can see here in 2018 that of the 894,000 people who immigrated to Germany, 58% were from an EU country, while 42% were from outside of the EU. Now data on irregular migration is also present, but let's remember that this data concern is specifically related to detected irregular migrants. Now the story here is about irregular migrants who have been detected and ordered to return to their country of origin, represented here by the solid bar. The gray dot, however, indicates the number who actually did return to their country of origin. This tells us that not all detected irregular migrants comply with orders to return each year. There are, of course, other forms of data visualization, but they generally follow a similar format as the three we just looked at. This holds true for both the EU and non-EU categories. The only difference is the type of indicator being visualized. The great thing about the Atlas being online, however, is that it is interactive. Look here how simply moving your cursor over graph titles creates an explanation of what the graph is saying. A bonus is that when you put the cursor over different parts of the graph, additional information shows up to further contextualize the data. This is what makes the Atlas so accessible to anyone interested. You do not need to be a data scientist to understand what is going on with global migration data. Lastly, let's talk about how to export data from the Atlas. The most straightforward way is to download the charts as a PDF document, which can be easily done with the button at the top of your screen. If you would rather have an image or a PowerPoint, you can press the download button at the bottom of the screen and select your preferred format. Additionally, the Atlas provides direct links to the raw data used to generate these graphs. Bear in mind that working with raw data is a bit more complex since it will not be cleaned and prepared. However, I have a video on the channel showing a rundown of using raw UN data on migrant stocks linked in the description. To find this raw data, navigate to the Atlas homepage and open the document titled Manual. This document's technical notes section gives links to every raw data source used in the Atlas. Thank you for joining me on this Migration Atlas Data Overview. If you liked this video, please share with your friends, give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Ringing that notification bell will ensure you never miss an update. I'll see you next time.